Hello students. In today's lecture, we will see analysis of soaps and detergents. This is our second chapter from paper CHA 5403 section 1. So, in this chapter, we will see the points which are here. First point is analysis of soap and detergents. In this, we will see general scheme of analysis, sampling, then alcohol soluble materials, moisture and volatile matter, active ingredient and equivalent combined sulfate. So, in this point, we will see this much. After that, there are some tastes for soaps are given. Total fatty acids fatty anhydride combined alkali and anhydrous soap unsaponified and unsaponifiable matter free alkali or free acid tighter reagent or tighter taste iodine value saponification value and free glycerol these are the taste we are going to perform for the soaps and here are the some tastes for synthetic detergents, unsulfonated or unsulfated matter, ester sulfate, combined alcohols, total combined SO3, alkalinity, chlorides, silicates, phosphates, borates, ultraviolet spectroscopic analysis of detergents. In this, we will see. Biodegradability of detergents, determination of sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate, then determination of sodium toluene sulfonate, determination of sodium xylene sulfonate, and determination of germicides in soft sand detergents. This whole topic is of a lay eight lectures, and you can refer. The reference book which is given in your syllabus and reference one is useful for all the study. So, in today's lecture, we will see the introductory part of this chapter, soap and detergent. So, we will start with it. So, introduction is here. Soaps and detergents are useful for washing clothes or utensils and so on. It dissolves dirt, but some dirt will not dissolve in water. So, soaps and detergents help water to remove the dirt particles. Then, soaps. Here, a soap is the sodium salt or a potassium salt of a long chain carboxylic acid or the fatty acids which has a cleansing properties in water. So, simply soap contains sodium salt and the potassium salt and a long chain of fatty acids or carboxylic acids and which helps water to clean the dirt. Then it is a salt of a strong base that is NaOH and a weak acid carboxylic acid. So, a solution of soap in water is in basic in nature. So, here are the examples of soaps which we are using in daily purpose. Then, how does soap clean the dirt? So, soap dissolves in water initially. A soap is a molecule which has a long hydrocarbon end and a short ionic end containing COO and a plus. The Non-ionic hydrocarbon end has the property to repel water. That is, it is a hydrophobic in nature. And this is called as a hydrophobic tail. Then, ionic end has the property to attract water. That's why it is called as a water-loving head or the hydrophilic end. This end att attaches itself to the water. It is the hydrophilic heat. The hydrocarbon end attaches to the dirt or the grease to form structures called as a mycelids. 
So, this is the diagram which is known as a micellar structure. Here, see, this is the one thread. At the head, this is the head and this one is the tail. So, see in this diagram, this curly part is a tail or a water heating tail which does not like water. That means this is a not dissolving in water or the oil part is here and this head is a water loving head. Then see this is the head which is an ionic end and this is a polar or the hydrophilic end and its tail is here which is called as a hydrophobic tail and this hydrophobic tail is a non-polar in nature and this is made up of a hydrocarbon chain. So, the short ionic end which contains COO and a plus and the non-ionic hydrocarbon end is here. It repels water and from this such a type of Head and tail structures comes together to form a structure. This is known as a mycelium. Then mechanism of source. So see when a dirty cloth is put in the water which contains soap. Then the hydrocarbon end of the soap molecule in the micelle attached to the oil or grease particles present on the surface of the dirty cloth. In this way, the soap micelle entraps the oily particles by using the hydrocarbon ends. The ionic ends of the soap molecules remain attached to the water when the dirty cloth is agitated in soap solution. The oily particles present on its surface gets dispersed in the water due to which the cloth gets clean. So see, we have a dirty cloth and in water we have added a soap and this dirty cloth is kept in this water. There is a soap. Soap molecule contains the micellar structure. And this micellar structure attached to the oil or the grease particles which are present on the cloth. In this way, the micellus entraps the oily particles from the cloth and the cloth will get clean. Then, next point is a uh, what are detergents? So, Detergents looks like the soaps but the properties are somewhat different. Detergents are sodium salts of long chain benzene sulfonic acid or sodium salts of long chain alkyl hydrogen sulfate. A detergent molecule consists of a large hydrocarbon group that is non-ionic and sulfonate that is SO3 minus Na plus or a sulfate SO4 minus Na plus group that is ionic. So again here is a hydrophobic tail and the hydrophilic head. This head which is water loving head and this tail is a water hating ta uh, tail. Again there is a formation of mycelium. Same way detergent will work as a soap. So here is a difference between soaps and the detergent. So soaps are the sodium salt or the potassium salt of long chain carboxylic acid and here the detergent is the sodium salt of long chain benzene sulfonic acid or sodium salt of a long chain alkyl hydrogen sulfate. So sulfates are included in the detergents mostly. Again this a detergent molecule which contains a large hydro hydrocarbon group that is a non-ionic and the sulfonate containing groups. Here again a hydrophobic tail is there and hydrophilic head is there. Tail is insoluble and the head is soluble or the water loving polar 
end is this. Here are the some examples of the detergents. Two basic examples of rain non detergents of the sulfonate group or the sulfate groups are here. First example is this sodium para dodecyl benzene sulfonate. In chemistry practicals, you have used this practical to find out critical micelle concentration of sodium dodecyl sulfate. And second example is here sodium lauryl sulfate or the sodium hendodacyl sulfate. Then cleansing action of detergents. Synthetic detergents have the same type of molecule structure as soap. That is a tadpole like molecule having two parts such as a non-polar hydrocarbon group that is water repelling hydrophobic end and another short ionic group visually containing the group that attracts the water this is called as hydrophilic end or this end is a polar end and thus the cleansing action is exactly similar to the soaps whereby the formation of micelle is followed by emulsification occurs and however synthetic detergents can lather well even in hard water this is because they are soluble sodium or potassium salts of sulfonic acid or alkyl hydrogen sulfate and similarly form soluble calcium or magnesium salts or reacting with the calcium ions or the magnesium ions which are present in the water. This is a major advantage of the cleansing property of detergent over soap. So as I have said again the detergents have the two ends as a water loving head and the water heating tail same way it can work as a soap then there is a one advantage of the detergent over the soap because it can react with the calcium ions and the magnesium ions which are present in the water then here is a difference between soaps and detergents so soaps they are metal salts that is a sodium salt and the potassium salts of the long chain higher fatty acids detergents are the sodium salts of long chain hydrocarbons like alkyl sulfates or alkyl benzene sulfonates then soaps are prepared from vegetable oil and the animal fats Detergents are prepared from hydrocarbons of petroleum or the coal. Then soaps cannot be used effectively in hard water as they produce scum that is insoluble precipitates of calcium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, Fe2 plus, etc. And here detergents does not produce the insoluble precipitates in hard water. They affect they are effective in soft hard or salt water also so this is the main advantage of the detergents as i have said it can react with the magnesium 2 plus then calcium 2 plus or any other elements and there is a no effect no precipitation is formation so that detergents are used in the soft hard and the salty water also then advantage of detergents since detergents are the salts of strong acids they do not get decomposed in acidic medium the detergents are effective to clean fabrics even if the water is acidic in nature then synthetic detergents are more soluble in the water than the soaps then they have a stronger cleansing action than the soaps as the detergents are derived from petroleum, they save on natural vegetable oils which are important as essential cooking medium. So detergents are more effective than the soaps. Then disadvantages of the detergents are here. Many detergents are the resistant to the action of biological agents and thus are not biodegradable. 
They are elimination from municipal wastewater by the usual treatments is the main problem. They have a tendency to produce stable forms in rivers that extend over several hundred meters of the river water. This is due to the effects of surfactants used in their preparation. Thus, they pose a danger to aquatic life also. They tend to inhibit oxidation of organic substances present in wastewaters because they form a sort of envelope around them. So, as disadvantages are there, there are so many disadvantages of the detergents are there.